In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create a simple but effective car wheel rigging setup. So with this basic rigging setup, if you move the car forward and backwards, that's going to rotate the tires. And also if I rotate the car so it's not facing the world space, if I now move this along its local space, the car tires are still going to move correctly. And what's also really cool about this setup is I'm going to show you how to create another object which will actually rotate the front tires. So you can actually rotate the car and have the car turn. And if you'd like to purchase the finished tutorial project files, you can get that with the links in the video description. So you can go into the Blender file and see how I'm going to be rigging this. And the project files will also come with a startup blender file which I'll be using and you can use that to follow along with the tutorial and use the exact same models I'm using. Now to rig this we're going to be using object constraints and so after watching this video you might be interested in checking out my object constraints for beginners tutorial where I cover all the main object constraints and how to use them so if you want to check out that video the link is in the description. So the first thing that I want to do is make sure that this is the default scale and default rotation of the object. And that'll help to not run into as many issues later in the video. So I'm going to select all the objects and I'll press Ctrl A and I'm going to apply the rotation and scale. Now what I want to do is make sure the tire object is going to rotate correctly. So if we just select the tire object, if I just rotate it on the x-axis, you can see it's going to rotate correctly, but that is because the origin point is in the very center. So for some reason the origin isn't in the very center, so the tire isn't rotating exactly in the center. What you want to do is select the tire and you want to click on object, set origin, and you want to set the origin to geometry. That'll make sure that the origin point, which is that little orange dot there, is in the exact very center. So that way when you rotate it on the x-axis it'll rotate around without wobbling. So now what I want to do is make it so that when I move the car the tire is going to move with it. So we're going to select the tire and then shift select the car and I'll press Control P and we'll set parent to object. So this way when I move the car around you can see the tire is moving with it. So now what I want to do is select all the other objects inside the tire and I want to parent them to the tire. So just select all the objects and I'm going to hit G to grab and just move it to make sure I have all the objects selected. So these are all the objects like the hubcap and everything inside the tire. And then lastly, I'm going to shift select the tire and I'll press control P and I'll set parent to object. So now when I select the tire by itself, I can move the tire and I can rotate the tire. I can rotate the tire on the Z axis and I can rotate it on the X axis and you can see it all rotates with it. So now I'm going to add an object constraint to make it so that when we move the car forward, that is going to make the tire rotate. So what we want to do is select the tire and we want to go to the constraints properties. So the constraints properties looks like these little gears with this little belt around them. So we're going to click on add object constraint and we're going to add the transformation. So with the transformation constraint, we're saying that when an object does one transform, that's going to make the other object do another transform. So first we need to choose the target, which is what's going to control the other object. So here on the target, we want to click on the eyedropper and we want to choose this cube here, which is the car. Now there is the target space and the owner space. And so that is this object here and then the tire object. Now for both of these, instead of using the world space, I want to use the local space because let's say you're rigging this car and let's say the car is like going up a hill. Maybe it's over here and it's like rolling up a hill. So it's going to be like rotated at a weird angle. So if I hit G to grab and then hit Y, well now Y is going to not move it forward in relative to the car's rotation. If I hit Y again, that's going to use the local axis. Because the car might have its own local axis, instead of using the world space, we want to use local space on both of these. So now we're going to open up the map to and the map from. So the map from is what is the first object going to do, and then the map to is going to be in turn what is the original object going to do. So from the map from, you can choose location, rotation, and scale. But since I want the car to move forward and I want that to affect the tire, we want to leave it to location. So now what I want to do, if I just select the car, I'll hit G to grab and we want it to rotate or move on the y-axis. So when it moves on the y-axis, that's going to rotate the tire. So if we select the tire again, you can see there is a minimum and maximum values for the y-axis. So location y, we're going to turn the maximum just to like a 2 for now, and then the minimum will turn to 0. So for the map 2, that is actually going to be what the tire does. So we have location, rotation, and scale, but I want the tire to rotate. So we're going to change the type to rotation. Now you can see that there are the x source axis, the y Y source axis and the Z source axis, and then there are drop downs for the X, Y, and Z on all three of these. Now, right up here on the map from, we are using the Y axis. So just to make it really simple and easy to understand, we want to change all three of these to Y. So if you change all of these drop downs to Y, you can see it's going to gray out the X and the Z, and we're not using them, we're just using the Y. So that's kind of a simple way to understand which one you need to set it to. So set it to the one which you're using on the map from. So now, if I just hit 
r to rotate and then hit x we want this to rotate on the x-axis so we want to use the x one right here so on the x source axis the minimum value we're just going to leave a zero but the maximum value i want to make it go all the way around in a circle since we want it to rotate like a tire so we're going to turn this to 360 degrees so you can see it did something so if i select the car again and move it you can see it's rotating correctly except that it's rotating in the opposite direction so let's hit escape we're going to select the tire again instead of it rotating by 360 degrees we're going to make it negative 360 degrees so now when i select the car and move it on the y-axis you can see it's rotating correctly now there is one more problem if i select the car and move it you can see once it gets around to one full rotation it actually stops and so it looks like the car is skidding and so what we need to do is just tell it to basically loop the animation and continue to loop again and again so if we select the tire we want to click on the extrapolate button so this way once it gets all the way back to 360 it'll just basically like jump back to zero and then do it over again so that's kind of an easy way to think about it it's basically just looping the animation so once it gets to the end of this number it'll just redo it all over again so this way i can select the car and i can move it on the y-axis and you can see the tire is just going to continue to rotate and i can move it really far now there is a small problem with this if i go to side view by hitting the three on the numpad and then move this up on the z-axis if i zoom in closely and then move it back and forth you can see it looks like the tire is kind of skidding almost like it's skidding through maybe some water or some mud or something or it's moving over ice and so i want to make sure that the tire is rotating at the exact correct amount so to do this we want to select the tire and we want to hit the n key to open up the side panel let's now click up here on the item tab and we want to go down here to the dimensions so you can see there is the y dimensions and the x dimensions and the z dimensions in this case i'll just use the y dimensions so if i click on the y dimensions i'm going to hit Control c to copy this value and so this is going to be the size from this side of the tire to the very end of the tire. Now what you want to do is you want to open up a calculator program and you want to hit control V to paste the value. And I'm just going to get rid of the M. So just get rid of that value. Now what we want to do is find half of it because what we want to do is find the exact amount from the center of the tire out to the very end. But right now this value is the entire length of the tire. So what we're going to do is divide this value by two. So since we divide it by two, that is going to be half of the value. So this is the amount from the very center of the tire out to the very end of the tire. So I'm going to select this value and I'll hit control C to copy. So now what I'm going to do is open up this Omni calculator website and I will have a link in the video description to this website. And what we're going to do is use this to find the circumference of the tire. So if you think of this C value as being the tire, we want to basically find the length of the tire all the way around. So if you like cut the tire and then laid the tire out flat and then measured it, we want to find out what that value is. So what we're going to do is click here on the radius and we're going to hit control V to paste the value. Value. so this is the value that we copied from our calculator and so you can see the circumference which is the orange value all the way around the circumference is this value so we're just going to click to select it and hit Control c to copy now back in blender what i want to do is select the tire and we want to scroll down here and what we want to do is go to the map from value so instead of two which was just like a placeholder value that i added which is kind of a rough estimate i'm going to click here on the max value and i'll hit Control v and then hit enter so this is going to be the exact correct value so now if i select the tire let's hit n to close the side panel and we're going to go to side view now if i hit g to grab and move it back and forth you can see there isn't any sliding and it looks exact and you can zoom in really close and kind of compare the tread to the grid here and just kind of move it back and forth and you can see there's no sliding it looks really good so now what i want to do is rotate the tire on the z-axis so we can actually make the car turn so what I'm gonna do is hit Shift C to send out the 3D cursor, and I'm gonna to go to the Add menu, and you can really add whatever object you want for the controller object. But what I'm gonna do is go to Empty, and I'm going to add a Sphere Empty. But you can add whatever object you want, and I'll hit G and Z and move it up, and then just scale it down. And why I'm using a controller object is because I want one object which are gonna control both sides of the tires. So now what I wanna do is lock the rotation so that this empty can only rotate on the Z axis. So let's go to the constraints tab. I'm gonna click on add object constraint and I'm going to add the limit rotation. Now we want to limit the X and limit the Y. So let's turn both of these values on. So check mark them, but we're gonna leave the values at zero. So now if I try to rotate this, so hit R to rotate, I can't rotate it on the X or the Y. I can only rotate it on the Z. Now also here on the owner, we wanna change this to local space because again, if we like rotate the car, kind of 
rotate it up like this, we'd want it to still rotate on its local space, not the global space. So now what I want to do is parent the empty to the car so that when we move the car, it also moves the empty. So I'm going to select the empty and then shift select the car last and I'll hit control P and set parent to object. So now when I move the car, it's also going to move the empty. So now what I'm going to do is select the tire and what we can do is click on add object constraint. We're going to add a second object constraint after the first one and I'm going to add copy rotation. So it copies the rotation of the empty. So let's scroll down here to the copy rotation. Now for the target, we want to choose the controller. So we're going to click on the eyedropper and we're going to choose this empty. And then again, just like we've done before, I want to turn the target to the local space and also the world to the local space. So now if I select the empty and rotate it, you can see the tire is rotating. However, if I select the car and move the car, you can see now the tire is stuck again. So to fix this, I want to select the tire. And why this is happening is because we have two different object constraints. We have copy rotation, but then if I scroll up here, we also have the transformation. And so I want to scroll down. And what I want to do is go to this mix type on the copy rotation. And right now it's set to replace. So it's going to replace the rotation. Well, instead of doing that, I want to turn it to add. It's going to take the original transformation or the first transformation, and then it's going to add the copy rotation after. So I can now rotate the car and that's going to rotate the tire. But if I select the empty, I can also rotate the empty and then I can still move the car back and forth. So now what I want to do is copy the wheels and move it over to the other side. So I'm going to go into wireframe and I'm going to deselect everything. And I'm just going to click B for the box select and box select all the tire objects and the hubcaps. Let's go back to solid view. And then lastly, I'm going to shift select the tire object. So I'm now going to hit shift D to duplicate and let's hit X to move it over on the X axis and let's hit one to go to front view and I'll just move it over here. And then what I want to do is invert it. So I'll hit tab to go into edit mode. So we're going to go into edit mode of all the objects at once. I'm going to hit a to select everything and we want to scale everything. We're going to scale everything on the X axis and I'll type negative one and then enter. So this way it's going to flip it. So you can see now the hubcaps are on the other side. So if I go back to front view, let's just move it over and move it to right about there. And then also I need to hit shift N to recalculate the normals. So now if I go back to object mode, you can see that looks correct. However, I do want to make sure that the tire actually rotates correctly and it might be a little bit offset. So if I select this empty here and rotate it on the Z axis, it does look close, but on the tire object, the origin point might have gotten moved around a little bit. So what I want to do is select the tire and we're going to click on object, set origin, and then origin to geometry. And you can see the origin point actually moved a little bit. So now it's going to rotate exactly in the center of the tire. So now if I just select the empty and we're going to rotate the empty on the Z axis, you can see here on both sides, it's actually rotating the tires. So now what I want to do is add the back tires. So we're going to go to side view. We're going to go into wireframe and I'm going to box select the entire front tires and I'm going to hit shift D to duplicate. Let's move it on the X axis or actually the Y axis. And we're just going to stick it right back there. Now with most car wheels, the back tires don't rotate. So this is not correct. So what I'm going to do is select the tire on the back and I'm simply going to click on the X here to delete the copy rotation, then go here to the back one or the other side and click on the X here to delete the copy rotation. So now that they're deleted, you can see this one is still going to rotate correctly. So the front ones are going to rotate, but the back tires still have the transformation. So the entire car is going to rotate. So I can rotate the car at a different angle, but then when I move the car, so hit G and then tap the Y key twice, it's still going to move up but then this can still rotate. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the finished tutorial project files, you can get that with the links in the video description on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And if you wanna learn more about object constraints, then definitely check out my object constraints for beginners tutorial. Link to that video will be in the description. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.